Hello, welcome to my tech fan. My name is Igor and um, it looks like I have again a cooperation with the Banggood after a longer break and the same with this uh, BQ Hurricane for the testing. This is clipper based CD printer with the, all those advantages which uh, clipper offers like remote printing, connection over the Wi-Fi, uh, input shaping and similar. But on the other side it is still a bed slinger which uses those rubber wheels and it has the single z-axis so the structure is very similar like i know and the 3v2 or something like that now uh, some other features it has auto leveling and the filament sensor uh, it has partial bed heating so it is very interesting so we can choose if we want to heat only the center of the bed using 100 watts or we want to heat uh, the whole bed in that case it uses 240 watts according to the website silent printing because it used the cmc 2209 drivers I mean, these drivers are now in use several years now, so this is not really new. I'm very curious <laughs> whether the company uh, came up with uh, so something like that, that it is a silent printer because it uses quiet fans. Okay, so don't worry, I will measure the noise too, and it will be added to that uh, summary table on my website. It has the Bowden style Teflon light hot end with the maximum temperature of 260 degrees Celsius according to the specifications. But depend on the quality of the Teflon line, uh, it is not really recommended to go above 240 degrees Celsius if you use it regularly on this temperature. Recommended speed is only 60 millimeters per second and the maximum limited by the firmware is 180 millimeters per second and I'm not sure is it the limit of the mechanics probably not uh, could be the limit of the hot end and the nozzle they use here now I can see that uh, immediately we can order some uh, very useful upgrades just to list them accelerometer H2 extruder this is good quality direct drive extruder bigger screen dual z axis BQ camera and uh, it is pity that they don't offer this possibility to have, I don't know, BQ Hurricane Pro or something like that, which includes uh, all these upgrades. Anyway, let's see what's in the box. The packaging is very good and it is packed in several layers. This was in the box. We have the base and then this bridge with the X Gen 3, which is quite pre assembled. Here we can see the hot end and this, there is some kind of uh, beer touch or something like that. The power cable, this is the screen and it has insert before power on, do not hot plug unplug. We have some tools uh, and uh, USB drive and probably we have a lot of useful information on so it. Spool holder, uh, unfortunately these sample filaments without spool, some uh, Teflon tube and that's it. This is the user manual and the assembling will be very simple because it is quite pre-assembled printer. There is a switch on the hot bed and with this we can uh, choose if we want to heat only the whole bed or only this smaller area to save some power and I will check these uh, heating areas with the thermal camera later. Now let's see what is inside. Well, this is how it looks inside from the bottom. This is the stepper motor for the Z-axis power supply unit. The output is 24 volts and 14.5 amperes or 350 watts probably. And this is the main board, which is also a microcomputer actually, so we don't need a Raspberry Pi to run the clipper. And I can see four stepper motor drivers, so we don't have a space for another one. Let's say if I want to do an upgrade to two uh, lead screws on the Z-axis. Of course we can, but uh, they will be run from one stepper motor. I can see a small fan which will cool this uh, main board and the stepper motor drivers. And I start with the assembling and first I have to remove the stepper motor from the bridge. And then I have to insert the X gentry. And actually I switched the order, so first it is recommended to insert the lead screw because this bridge is folded by two bolts from the bottom. And now I cannot insert easily this uh, lead screw, so I have to remove it from the coupling. So this is important uh, to check the <laughs> steps of the assembling, but it is not a big deal. I mean, just inserting the lead screw and then uh, hold it in this coupling and also fix the Z-axis stepper motor. Inserting the filament holder. This is a screen. I'm connecting the cables and then attaching it with the two bolts. And this is the SD card, which contains the operation system 
I will insert it so I will not forget to add it later. And then connecting the cables, everything is uh, marked so it is very easy to connect. Attaching the ribbon cable to the hot end and using some zip ties to manage the cable management. Connecting the bobbin tube. Also connecting with the extruder. Very important part. And then inserting the PI sheet, which is two sided. The important step is to set the tension on these V-slot wheels using this open end wrench on aesthetic nuts and you have to do it on all three axes. And after this check the tension on the timing belts and if necessary you can add more tension by rotating these knobs. This is for the Y axis and this one is for the X axis. And don't forget to check the voltage if we set correctly for your country. Hmm, the important thing I have to fix, I noticed it may stuck here. So I need some kind of holder to hold this cable on this side in this position. And then it will not stuck. Before I turn it on, I want to prepare it to the Wi-Fi connection. And later I will use the cable because it is much faster, for, especially with bigger file transfers. But I want to test it with the Wi-Fi. Here, this is the SD card with the operation system. There is a system configuration file where I have to enter my Wi-Fi network and the password. And now I can insert it back to the printer. And important to remember that I never turn on the printer without this SD card because uh, it contains the operation system for the printer. I turn it on and there is a warning that the uh, operation system card must be ready before the power on while it is inside. And the operation system will start in 45 seconds. The printer is ready, let's try to find the IP address. Here it is and I have to enter it into my browser. Let's test it with my smartphone so far. Hmm, and it's working. But first I have to level the bed and do some other settings. So inside the control, let's start with the homing of all axes. This was homing of the Z axis. Manual leveling. Looks like this was very close to the correct settings because very minimally I have to adjust it. Bad mesh and save. So it will now create that uh, auto leveling, which will record any inaccuracy from the perfect uh, horizontal surface and it will be compensated during the printing. Of course, that's why it is important that manual leveling, it is best if this auto leveling don't have to compensate anything at all. And over the network, I can see the result of this uh, mesh probing. Let's preheat the nozzle and insert this uh, 50 gram sample filament, which I really use. I really appreciate when it's arrived on some kind of spool. Preheating to 200 degrees Celsius. And I can see it is extruding on the other side, but I'm always missing some kind of metallic tweezers from the package. Let's print some G code, which is prepared by the manufacturer. And um, I don't know, let's try this leveling. It started with the homing and now it starts with the printing. This is the purge. Ah, the huge square. Hmm, I like this test. It was finished in four minutes. Let's analyze it a little bit. Well, this was quick test, but it is good to see that the bed is leveled correctly, properly with that uh, offset mesh too. Ah, when it bed cools down, it is easy to remove it. I just started with the printing of the boat. Looks like it's some kind of bench, but a little bit bigger. But in the meantime, this uh, sample filament broke. At least I can see, I can test the filament runout sensor. Ah, filament runout sensor works because the filament broke. Uh, this is why I don't like this kind of sample filaments, but at least I could test the filament runout sensor and at least we know that it works.
unloading the filament now unfortunately i'm not familiar with the clipper so probably there is some kind of command to resume the printing but uh, unfortunately i cannot find it and uh, this means that regular user will not find it neither over the screen because uh, in marlin i will expect here to have the resume or something like that and actually here it is and clipper screen it was the play button because it was pause now it's printing the second layer already. Interesting, I can see the settings are 200 degrees Celsius on the nozzle and 50 on the bed. The progress is good, but I can hear some cracks from time to time. This means this uh, sample filament is very wet. Printing is finished a few seconds ago. This was two and a half hours printing, but this is bigger branch in not standard size. And immediately I wanted to check the bed adhesion, which could be a little bit better, maybe I could lower the Z offset. Or actually during the printing, instead of 50, I would like to use 60 degrees Celsius. Let's analyze this bench in the daylight, which actually looks great, uh, just a little bit stringing, but I'm not surprised about that, because I heard some cracks during the printing, so this sample filament is uh, quite wet and very brittle. Just for size comparison, this is the original size Benchy and this is for some reason scaled up approximately 50%. I'm not sure what is the reason because now we don't really see the real printing time, but actually it was very slow like NS3 or something like that with these uh, default settings. Now on the bottom surface I can see the textures from the bed surface, so this means I cannot really go lower with the Z offset, but definitely I will print everything on 60 degrees Celsius and not uh, 50 like on this sample G-code. I will turn over this switch and then I will heat up the bed to 60 degrees Celsius and only the middle part will be heated and I will check with the thermal camera how it looks like. It can be seen very nice that the middle part is heated only. And now let's turn on the switch. And after just a couple of minutes I can see the whole bed is uh, quite equally heated. Only in the corners and maybe we have the edge of 5 mm is a little bit colder. It is time to prepare the slicer adding a non-network printer. And it is good to see that uh, here we have the BQ Hurricane in the list. This uh, calibration cube which is also a D6 dice will be the first object which I will slice and prepare. And I will upload it over the network using the advantages of the clipper firmware. And I will turn on only the partial heating, so only the center will be heated to these uh, 60 degrees Celsius. And it starts with the printing. I was worried about this purge line that it will not stick, because here theoretically the bed is cold, but it was okay. And here you can see the printing process, and it was finished in approximately 17 minutes. The cube looks ok and also I checked the dimensions, they are ok, but now uh, I'm using a steve I want to improve a little bit the bed adhesion. Then I'm cleaning everything with isopropyl alcohol and I'm using the East Sun's uh, high flow PLA filament. The filament was changed without any problems, but manually. And this is the regular size Benchy which uh, I slice myself in Acura. And it was printed in approximately one hour and two minutes, so double the size compared to the NS3. Bed adhesion is great, and when it cools down, I could remove it. And um, this time, the benchy looks okay. There is no problem with it. The first layer is good, no stringing. So this time, I'm happy with it. Next printing was in a spiral vase mode. It has very small contact surface, and I'm using the partial heating. But I had a problem because I couldn't stop the printing over the screen. Here you can see, so basically we cannot stop the printing over the screen, I go through the menus, but uh, nothing, so this, this should be definitely added here. Anyway, I turn on the heating of the whole bed, and now I had no problems with this. Uh, this is a spiral vase mode printing of the phone holder. When it cools down, it is easy to remove it, and as you can see, it works, and it can be printed very quickly. I can see some marks uh, on the bed surface. Next was testing a long printing, a couple of hours. The printing is on 40% and um, this will be finished overnight. And I hope everything will be fine by the morning. Hmm, good morning. 
and it's finished. Oh, <laughs> I can see some warping on this corner, so I think the bed adhesion could be a little bit better, but uh, this hour looks okay. Actually great, there is no stringing on the top part, you know, when the tool head is moving between these two elements. Hmm. And I can see more and more marking is coming down, and I can see it on the object. So the painting on the heated bed is not so good because it is coming off. And I notice one more thing. Every time when I turn off the heating of the whole bed, only center is heated, I have some problems with the bed adhesion. Is this coincident? I'm not sure. But maybe that's the case that uh, this part here takes off the heat from this part in the center and uh, we don't have that uh, great bed adhesion. Just in case I will always turn on the heating of the whole bed. And now conclusions. And I don't know really where to place this machine compared to other printers. Probably the most important factor will be the price. Let's say it is similar like NDS 3 v 2 of course, it has some advantages like uh, filament sensor, the auto leveling sensor. A very nice idea is this uh, partial heating of the bed, but uh, pay attention if you are using only the center of the bed for the heating, you still need a little bit smaller objects. Uh, I advise to use at least 20 millimeter margin from that uh, half a millimeter distance. Clipper. So this is actually the advantage, but only for the experienced users, because uh, if you are familiar with Clipper, Yes, if you connect with a computer or tablet, you have a lot of advantages and a lot of control over the printing. Using only the screen is not enough. So beginner users who would like to use only the screen couldn't use it because I couldn't even stop the printing when I had some failure over the screen. That's a big mistake, I think. At least that stop or resume or pause function should be available on the screen too. Also, when the filament run out sensor stopped the printing, I couldn't continue without connecting over the laptop or, or tablet. So on the screen again, I am missing that function that I can continue. Uh, this bed surface could be a little bit better. I mean, the bed adhesion is okay, but not so good. Uh, I think uh, I may have a problem with the smaller uh, contact surfaces. Usually that's typical when I use some kind of tree supports and they start with very small contact area. And you know, during the printing, uh, the nozzle may produce some side force and that may break off. Um, this bed cable, in my case, uh, I had some problem that it stuck somehow on this uh, holder. I saw this problem. I couldn't see that any other reviews had this kind of problem. So maybe it's only on my machine. I'm not sure about this. So yes, it's a clipper. And if you know what is clipper, then this may be a good printer for you. But uh, definitely be ready that you will want to do some upgrades on it. First of all, like dual Z-axis and some others. Uh, with clipper, we have the advantage connect over the Wi-Fi network, input shaping. But for input shaping, again, I'm missing that accelerometer, which is, I know, dollar or two or something like that. So I think it should be included in this package. And uh, definitely don't sell this printer with uh, sample filaments. Some kind of uh, minimal spool would be nicer here. So this is only my first experience with this printer. Uh, if you have some other experience, you know, write me freelance in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing.